Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my fashion bunker. Today is all about purity. As you can see, I'm all dressed in white. White, 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 white. Pure white, because I'll talk about a white perfume. Actually, it's not a very white perfume. It's it's, it's kind of a violety, reddish type of color, the inspiration behind it. Uh, Chanel. And you have been asking me to make this review, so here it is. I'm back to perfume reviews. For a short time, for a limited time only, <laughs> only on Super Deco Fashion Bunker channel. This is the perfume in the question. The Misia Eau de Toilette 200 ml bottle. Will it focus? It will. There you have it. Now, this perfume exists as a 200 milliliter spray Eau de Toilette. 75 milliliter spray eau de toilette, 4 milliliter splash sample, not for sale, and I think 1.5 or 2 ml, ml milliliter spray sample, not for sale. Now, just for comparison reasons, here's my Sycamore perfume eau de toilette. This, the, these, these, these. this is how the difference in the between the bottles looks like. So when you're buying 200 ml or 75 ml, this is how they look in comparison. And another thing, uh, here is my bottle of 1932. Just to show you guys the difference between the color of the liquid, you can see how different it is, how intense and dark Mesia is compared to, for example, 1932. If you were to compare Mesia to number 18, 18 would be almost a transparent liquid, completely transparent white. Mesia is, yeah, it's yellow ambery, but it has those kind of tones or hues of red kind of swimming in there together with the yellow hues. Um, let's spray it on immediately. Now, I'm going to do two sprays because, well, I have been wearing it quite a bit, as you can, well, quite a bit. You can see that a little bit on top is already missing. So I have been testing it for two weeks now. And uh, yeah, right off the bat, I smell the, the Chanel brandy in it. Now the Chanel brandy that is also present in number 18, when you first spray number 18, there's that like alcohol brandy thing going on here as well. I didn't notice it the first time, the first few times I sprayed it, but the more I sprayed and I literally bathed in this stuff, it opens up with a delicious brandy. Now, I'm not a huge fan of brandy, the drink. So whenever I smell it, I kind of smell how it would taste. So that's not my cup of tea, but this brandy thing just evaporates immediately. Like actually, if you just spray it once, you don't even smell the brandy. After two sprays on one spot, or I usually do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine on the clothes. Like I really bathe this shit. So. In perfumes in general so I smell it out a lot but if you know how to dose it better you might not sense it out a lot but I did start using Mesia in winter time so of course it's not so warm outside so you can really abundant perfumes because you know it's never too much because it's not hot outside so you won't kind of claw yourself to death um, top notes what do we have lychee and aldehydes mm, I will get to that in a minute Middle notes, peach, uh, raspberry, grass, rose, Turkish rose, base notes, tonka bean, benzoin, iris, oris, violet, vanilla, mimosa, and powdery notes. Now, again, for the billionth time, I don't like vanilla and perfumes. I don't sense it out here that much, so that's not a problem. Actually, I don't sense it at all which is divine. I do not smell vanilla in here. Did I say violet before? I meant vanilla. I don't like vanilla in perfumes. I don't like vanilla in perfumes. This one states that it has vanilla in the, um, in the base notes, but I do not sense the vanilla. However, it does also state violet in the base notes, but to me, it's violet right off the bat and it stays violet all the way through. Violet and powder. I do sense the Oris, but not as much as I would sense it in 28 La Pausa. Um, benzoin, yeah, I sense it. A raspberry, yeah, a little bit. 
rose and Turkish rose and grass rose peach yeah I don't know these are all words that are listed in the middle notes but like you tell me peach and I can say oh yeah there's a peach in there you tell me raspberry I'm gonna go oh yeah there's a raspberry in there you tell me poop and I'm gonna be like, oh yeah there's poop in there because the second I visualize something in my head and then I smell something that doesn't have anything to do with it I'm still gonna say oh yeah it smells like it so you have to kind of try to detach that's what I try to do when I get into a perfume that's why it takes me so long before I can actually review a perfume because I need that time to let it grow on me and to let my senses develop it for what it really is to me within my sensitivity and sensibility of a perfume now um, one thing that has remained throughout me using this perfume this sensation of having the most expensive violet candies with me all the time when I have this perfume now I don't know if all of you if all of y'alls know how um, violet candies taste like, but they literally taste the way Mesia smells. Literally, and they also smell that way. Of course, cheaper. This smells extremely elegant and sophisticated. And a, a, a bit trampy as well, but like, a, you know, Mesia Sat. Mesia Sat was uh, Coco Chanel's, one of Coco Chanel's, if not Coco Chanel's best friend. Uh, she was a, a female friend. She she was kind of, you know, within those, the, the, the period, the time, you know, bef between the two world wars, the first one and the second one and after, she was part of, you know, what you could, what you could call the French or the Parisian intelligentsia as far as I don't want to just say rich circles, but circles where the rich or the academics like to be entertained or what have you. I mean, she was very witty. She was amused to many artists. Mesia was, you know, in there. She was uh, the dame that uh, knew how to handle men and that knew how to handle society and that knew how to entertain society socially. So, of course, for her and Chanel to interact and to become friends was inevitable. You know what I mean, kind of, in that, especially in that period of time. Now, whether Myth wants it or not, or whether it's just my impression, I think there always has been some sort of competition between the two ladies, kind of, or who would outwit the other, but they would love it. It was a love-hate relationship. And I guess a love-hate relationship is the type of relationship only the best of friends can have. The bottom of the packaging, by the way, looks like this for the 200 milliliter version. Let's come in as close as possible. So you could even see the ingredients. You can screen shoot or, or uh, yeah, you could screen shoot this to check it out later on. This product can only be sold by authorized Chanel counters. Yes, mama, we know. We know, Chanel, we know. And you're made in France. We know, we know. Okay, now, um, oh, I love this scent. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't really, hmm. It doesn't change much from head to base it stays more or less the same except that brandy touch evaporates and then you're good to go it, at least on my skin it it's amazing um and the brandy's already gone it becomes slightly tingly sweet the aldehydes and yeah i'm not really sensing them out that much and if i do they annoy me in this case. I mean, they're there, I guess there's that like sparkly, but not as much as we're used to with number 22 or number five, for example. So yeah, okay, fine. We have Daldehydes, but that's not, that's not the game maker here. That's not the magic happening here. It's the violet. To me, it's the violet. And maybe mixed with rose in a way, the peach, the raspberry, meh, but orris root and violet. And actually, what else is in here? Iris. Now the iris gives it that powdery touch. The iris though is not smellable as iris it's not like here olfactory wise but it rather goes in deep there like it's it's that type of powder that kind of suffocates you a little bit but not because of the smell but rather because it kind of dries you out that's how amazingly dry this perfume is and at the same time it's like that sweet dryness that is always intoxicating to me it attracts me because i never really know how you know sweet is usually kind of wet and cloying to me and it makes me want to drink water this one doesn't want to make me drink water this one just makes me want to it makes me feel fresh even though it's sweet you know uh because of the pottery touch it's balanced out 
so magnificently in a very elegant way. Only Chanel could have pulled it off because the ingredients are so freaking up there and high that you, you literally, you can't go back, you know? Once you've smelled niche perfumes or perfumes that have been produced in smaller quantities because the raw ingredients are not available to, to make a mass product out of them, you can smell out if somebody's messing with you. You know, you know what I mean? If, if a perfume company is kind of fucking with you and it's just like taking your money but it's not really giving you the quality. Now, Chanel Exclusives, the Les Exclusives or Les Exclusives line is famous for being criticized for their very short longevity. I would say that's not the case with this one, at least on my skin. Now, number 1932, as much as I hated it in the beginning, now I love it. I particularly don't like the head note, but we'll get to this perfume. Maybe, maybe, maybe sometime soon. Uh, I love the dry down. The dry down of this is heaven. Unfortunately, though, with this with this particular perfume, um, you know, the the legend is true. It, it lasts nothing. <laughs> like an hour or two, then it's gone. Poof, evaporates. Like you're spending your hard-earned cash on something that is divine. But it's like heroin. I mean, you gotta you gotta get a fix every two hours. You know, you can't you you you, you just can't. You're, you're you're through with a bottle in a in two months. Mesia is different. It literally intoxicates you, and it's there. And it stays. It stays more on your skin than on your clothes. I've noticed that with me. I don't really sense it as much on my clothes later on throughout the day, but it does stay close to my skin. Now, I haven't received compliments. I haven't received critiques on this one. Nothing. It stays quite close to the skin, except maybe a hand length, but I overdo it with a spray, so I guess it might get cloying, but I like that. I like when people stay away from me because, in a way, it's my protection shield. You know what I mean? Like, if you really are interested in me, you really want to talk to me, you're going to penetrate that first force field of protection that I have, that I have installed, and then you're going to kind of start talking to me, and then we're going to get to be good friends. But, um... This is a sort of a this is a sort of a force field perfume. Now similar to well, Sycamore is very sexual. Sycamore definitely gives me, but you can check out my review in the card section above of Sycamore. Sycamore definitely gives me a more of a sexual vibe, even though it's very aggressive and out there, but it's more sexual, you know, it's more attractive. This one doesn't really attract. This one gives the spectator who's <laughs> looking at you or smelling you more the feeling of, oh, this person is different. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Some people want to blend in. I couldn't care less. You know what I mean? I just want to wear something that makes... I'm wearing perfume for me, not for you. I only wear it for me. It has to please me. The way it smells on me, it has to make me happy. And Mesia makes me happy. So there's this love-hate relationship like Coco Chanel had with me. That's what I was hinting at before. Like Coco Chanel had with Mesia, that love-hate relationship, best friends, worst friends, frenemies, as they would say in Sex in the City. That's my relationship with Mesia. I love it. I hate it. It's intense. It's an intense relationship and it's a confusing relationship. It does not give me too much that vibe of expensive makeup from the 20s. It does give me a hint of makeup, but only through the powdery. Does it make me smell an expensive lipstick? Not so much. What makes me smell more expensive lipstick is Cartier's uh, The Hours, uh, what's it called? Uh, number two, the second hour. That's expensive freaking lipstick. This is beyond that. This is more of a gourmand type of thing, but in a way, <sighs> gourmand, it's not really, I mean, it's, it's the violet candy that you can eat. And it's edible, the candy, mind you, not the perfume. Uh, but olfactory-wise, I do eat it up. It's definitely a perfume that I eat up because it does, even though it's a flower, you know, it's a violet, it doesn't make me feel like I'm running through meadows in the sun and grass in the south of France. No, it gives me more feeling of, okay, I am here in the middle of five billion plucked violet flowers. It, it can be even a closed room. It doesn't have to be a beautiful landscape. It can be an artificial space where all these flowers have been plucked and they're ready to get pressed for their essential oils and they're ready to get transformed into this. Like I feel that I, like I'm in the midst of the process of transformation of what nature can give me to what a man can, can kind of artificially manipulate in order to create something so majestic as this. And I like that. I like that this perf perfume is honest that way. It's honest and it's, 
in its in its kind of cocky way, you know, it, it tells you, hey, I'm an artificial chemical piece of something, and uh, you better like me. Uh, it doesn't tell you, yeah, it's nature. You've just plucked the flower from the meadows. Uh uh. It tells you, girl, we are in this container where all these flowers have been plucked. We are we are about to start the chemical process, and this is the amazing juice you're gonna get afterwards. So I'm honest to you. I have revealed, you know, I've taken off the mask. I've revealed my true self, and now that I have. I have your full attention and you trust me more because I'm not giving you the illusion of a lie. And that honesty is Mesia. And I think Olivier Poge did an amazing job because he combined kind of that mythology of Mesia within Chanel's life into this perfume and the relationship that if you allow it, of course, this perfume to grow on you, if you allow that relationship, you will install that sort of love-hate relationship, which is exactly the interpretation of the relationship between Chanel and Mesia. That's just my interpretation, obviously, but. And uh, don't forget, this is the first Olivier Polge, the son of Jacques Polge, who uh, since the late 70s was the head perfumer, the main perfumer of the house of Chanel. Now his son took over and uh, created two perfumes, right? This is his first Les Exclusives line uh, perfume, Mesia. 2015 is the date it was launched. And prior to that, or right after that, at the same time, more or less, I think prior to that, Chanel Au Vive from, you know, just regular launch, like a flanker of the Chanel Chance, Chance Au Vive. Now, I've been hinting to this on my Instagram account. Some of you, many of you, I don't know how many of you have read it, probably not many, but because uh, it was like a really hidden comment in the comment section under one photo. So you always got to read my comments because I always kind of drop hints at to what is going to come and actually hints to what uh, I am planning on doing it next in the future. Now, what I have discovered by accident, because Eau Vive has become my perfume of choice, Chance Eau Vive is always in my bag. Always. Always. No matter what freaking perfume I'm wearing that day, this one is always with me in case I can get back to my original perfume that I've been wearing that day after five, six, seven hours, whatever, I'm on the go. This one layered with anything is fabulous. It's divine. It's fresh. It's clean. I adore it, but clean in a really cool way. What I've noticed when you layer these two Olivier Polish concoctions, now first you gotta wear Mesia. A couple of hours later, now I don't have the time in this uh, review, but there, I'll just put it over now. You should wait like two hours. When you layer these two, oh my God. People have been criticizing Oviv. I love it. You gotta give it a try, guys. And check out my review in the card section up above of Chance Oviv. Magical perfume. It's been receiving hate, I don't know for what reason. Uh, to me, especially the dry down. What might smell is just, oh, you know, a blood orange is in the top and people might not like that. Citrusy kind of subdued tones. Transforms into something so baroque and woodsy and warm and musky at the bottom. Delicious. That musk woody and that blood orange mixed with the violet. I mean, guys. Okay, now it's too intense. I gotta wait. But like, if you wait like half an hour, don't judge a book by its cover. To me, the head notes are right off the bat what you spray out from the bottle, just like, that's the cover of the book. Don't judge it by the cover. Let it linger. Read a couple of chapters. Let those chapters get into you. Once those chapters are in there, once you've understood who is what character, who's playing who, who's who in this freaking novel, then you're allowed to start judging because then you could see if those characters appeal to you, if they're part of your life, could you relate to them or not? You know what I mean? Perfume is like a book. Don't judge it by the cover. When we spray both of them at the same time, tricky. Now it's already fading a little bit. Oh my God. On my skin, these two. Olivier Polish, I don't know what sort of sneaky, tricky game you're playing, mister, but it's working. You have got my full attention and I am expecting only magic from you for the house of Chanel in the future. No matter what you do, you've got my attention, mister. So don't, as RuPaul would say, fuck it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this review. If you did enjoy this review, please sum it up and let me know in the comment section down below so I can decide whether or not to do more perfume reviews or not because I'm still on the fence about this. And um, share this video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more. Love you, peace out, bye. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed my video and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So come on over guys and join the fun!